Hello and uh, my name is Mukunda Krishnaswamy. Uh, welcome to this webinar, Ins and Outs of the New Jersey ASK 2013 Transition Plan. It is my pleasure to introduce our presenters, Jennifer Dermer and Marissa Adams. Jennifer has worked in education for the past 16 years. She has taught third grade through eighth grade language arts, ESL at the university level, and was the director of English programs, grades, uh, pre-K through 12 at the French American Bilingual School. She has served as a curriculum writer and assessor. Her education-related publications include a curriculum guide for Lomos Learning. Marissa has worked in education for the past 13 years. She taught 8th grade U.S. history and was a campus-level administrator at the elementary, junior high, and high school levels. She has served as curriculum writer an assessor and is currently completing her PhD in educational administration. Her education related publications include two district wide curriculum guides for Katy Independent School District and a curriculum guide for Lumos Learning. In addition to her campus level work, Marissa serves on the US Congressman Michael McCall's Educational Advisory Board and is a member of Texas Council of Women School Executives. American Supervision and Curriculum Development, Phi Kappa Phi, Delta Kappa Gamma. She has been recognized three times in the Who is Who in Education Leadership publication. On a side note, Marissa recently released her first novel. And special thanks to Greg Applegate for all his advice and help in putting together this presentation. Greg has taught in the Piscataway Township School District for the past uh, 14 plus years. His expertise is in mathematics and he uses his knowledge of the subject to create exciting and meaningful lessons for his students. He is an active member of the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. Before I pass this on to Marissa, a couple of housekeeping tasks. During the presentation, all lines would be muted However, you can post your questions in the chat box. At the end of this presentation, we will have about five to ten minutes for questions and answers. Marissa, Jennifer, and I will answer as many questions as possible during this time. Please go ahead, Marissa. Good morning. Thank you for joining us as we explore the ins and outs of the NJS transition plan. We are excited to have a full house with us today, and because we have so many people online, as Makunda indicated, we will be activating the mute all button, and this will give everybody the best opportunity to hear all content. However, uh, we want to ensure that you have the opportunity to feel free to participate in the discussion. We will have time for the question and answer portion at the end of the presentation, but if you have a question or comment that you feel needs to be addressed during the presentation, Please feel free to type it into the chat box on your screen and we will try to address it. We will be covering quite a few interesting topics this morning. We're going to take a look at the Common Core State Standards Initiative timeline, the basics of the NJS transition plan, specifics of the ELA and math transitions, and the best way to help prepare students for the test. We will then follow up with that time for question and answers. And if there are not any other questions at this time, we're going to go ahead and get started. In June 2010, the first set of mathematics and language arts literacy academic guidelines were released. This was actually the beginning of attempting to standardize educational content across the state. The current alignment is known as the Common Core State Standards. These guidelines have been adopted by 45 states and three territories within the United States. A quick glance to the map at the top of the slide offers a visual as to which states have adopted the standards. These standards are not prescriptive in nature, but they do indicate what content should be taught at which grade level. The standards also build upon one another. A student may be exposed to particular content in one grade level and then should be able to analyze it at a later level. Looking towards the future, the goal for the initiative is to align the Common Core State Standards and the current accountability systems within each state. There are two consortiums that drive the assessment portion, the PARCC and Smarter Balance. States have chosen to join 
one or the other based on their preferences. And New Jersey works with the PARCC. The Common Core State Standards have now become a known term to most educators and administrators. All states which have adopted these new standards are moving towards implementing the best they can within a certain time frame. New Jersey has been working on this change for some time now, and this year will be the first year that the state assessments will see a change. Currently, the NJS has been modified in order to implement the new Common Core State Standards. However, this test won't be the final one developed, as the full range of standards will be on the new test developed and administered by the PARCC in 2015. Over the next few years, the NJS will continue to be transformed following the PARC framework. The most current changes to the NJS reflect alignment with the PARC framework. In this, grades 3 through 5, both in ELA and math, have been restructured based on the major and additional standards per the PARC content framework. There are more obvious and detailed changes in math than in English language arts. However, the nuances in the ELA are important and must be reflected in classroom instruction. At this time, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Jennifer so she can focus on the ELA transition. Thanks, Marissa. Throughout the English language arts portion of the test, the students will face more complex texts with an emphasis on grade level academic vocabulary. The questions asked will be based on specific evidence from the text. These shifts, as Marissa said, will actually be pretty subtle compared to the math changes as the NJASC test historically included text-dependent constructed response items. Classroom instruction should be moving towards having students respond to text by citing evidence from texts read, movies, television sources, digital sources, etc. All passages will be targeted towards the higher end of complexity for a specific grade level. However, Historically, the NJ Ask already does this. The Common Core State standard, Standards for grades 3 through 5 in language arts are separated into two domains, reading and writing. Within these domains, we have the different types of tasks that the students will need to complete. As you can see from the slide, for grades 3 through 5 in writing, they will need to do a narrative and then either an informative or opinion writing task. In reading the two types of passages, they will see, um, sorry, in reading the two types of passages they'll see are informational and literature. The informative explanatory prompts are based on topics familiar to students and they are asked to describe, discuss, and analyze some aspect of the topic. Students are able to draw on their own experience or opinions and what they know to develop ideas for their writing. Again, in grades um, 6 through 8, the Common Core State Standards in Language Arts have been separated into two domains, like earlier, the reading and writing. Within these domains, we have the different types of tasks that the students will need to complete. As you can see from the slide, in the middle grades, right in writing, they will need to do a persuasive task and then either an informative or a narrative writing task. Each domain is comprised of a set of related standards. Depending on the grade level, the reading tasks have a different number of questions. For example, the third grade will have 18 multiple choice questions, three open-ended questions, while fourth grade will have 24 multiple choice and three open-ended, and then the fifth grade will have 30 multiple choice and three open-ended. So it just goes, um, it increases according to their grade level. The writing will be scored using a five-point rubric, and the open-ended questions will use a four-point rubric. For the middle grades, the scoring isn't different among the different grades as it was in grades three through five. All the sixth through eighth graders will be scored in the same manner. The reading selections will have 36 multiple choice questions, and four open-ended, giving them a total of 52 points. 
The writing will be scored using a six-point rubric, and the open-ended questions, as in the elementary grades, is using a four-point rubric. The next slide just offers a visual representation of what we just explained and what the students will find on the um, transition part of the NJASC test. Thank you, Jennifer. Moving on with the mathematics portion of the test, the Common Core State Standards for grades 3 through 5 mathematics are separated into five domains. Each domain is comprised of a set of related standards. The standards offer schools a guideline as to what students should understand and be able to do by the end of each grade level. The standards are not intended to be teaching methods. They simply offer a model as to the goals of a school district should have for the students at each grade level. Although the domains are all important in their own right, some domains are given greater emphasis than others at different grade levels. Also, some standards build upon knowledge and skills acquired in previous grade levels. Along with establishing a clear, concise set of standards for each grade level, the Common Core Initiative also includes a list of eight practices that all successful mathematics students should be able to employ. This list of practices, described above on the slide, has been developed through many years of careful study of students and how they develop conceptual understanding of mathematics. Although some of these practices may seem like abstract ideas, teachers can help students to develop and apply them through carefully constructed exercises. Teachers can also establish a classroom environment in which students are encouraged to examine and reflect upon the thinking of others and themselves. These practices are an attempt to make mathematics more real for students. Students must recognize that math is not just a set of rules and definitions. Mathematics is a language requiring deep understanding and fluency. The mathematics section of the NJS is scored out of 50 possible points. As previously mentioned, the five domains do not have equal weight in each grade level. For instance, students are exposed to multiplication concepts and properties in depth during their third grade year. As a result, the NJS grade 3 will put greater weight on the domain operations algebraic thinking. On the other hand, students begin working with decimals after grade 3. Since decimals are a base 10 concept, the domain number and operations in base 10 is given greater weight in grades 4 and 5 than it is in grades 3. Here are the remainder of the domains from grades 3 through 5 and the points that each domain is worth on the NJS mathematics assessment. Again, the point values for questions in each of the domains varies between grade levels, depending on how much emphasis it placed on that concept in that grade level. The one exception to this is geometry, where the points are equal. On the previous slides, the amount of weight given to each domain in a particular grade level was listed. The total number of points on the NJASC devoted to each domain can be broken down into three main types of problems. One type of problem will be set up in a multiple choice format. The students will be required to choose the correct answer from a set of four possible answers. Each correct response is worth one point toward the total score. Although the student is given the opportunity to do any required work to arrive at a correct answer, the work is not in any way considered as part of the score on that exercise. A second type of problem is called short constructed response, or SCR. This type of problem also requires only a single answer, but the student is not given choices from which to choose. Instead, the answer must be written in an appropriate space in the test booklet. A correct response is worth one point. There is no partial credit option on this type of exercise. The student is given space in which to do work, but the person scoring the exercise only looks at what is written in the designated answer space. A third type of problem is called the Extended Constructed Response, or ECR. 
This type of problem ordinarily has multiple parts and requires the student to perform more than one task. The purpose of an ECR is to test for mathematical understanding. As a result, the ECRs are scored on a scale of 0 to 3 points. The people scoring the ECRs must determine the level of accuracy and understanding demonstrated by the student. It is possible for a student to receive partial credit on an ECR even if he does not put down a correct answer. The student may offer a written explanation that demonstrates a moderate level of understanding even if he is not able to arrive at the correct answer. The assessments for students in grades 3 through 5 are scheduled to take in the spring of 2013 will be set up in the familiar format of the NJS. The assessment will contain a combination of multiple choice exercises, short constructed responses, and extended constructed responses. Although the attempt is to align the assessment to the new Common Core State Standards, the assessment is still being considered transitional because of its limited ability to test all of the new standards and practices in a highly effective manner. It is not until a new assessment format is developed that the word transitional can be removed. A new assessment is being developed by the Partnership for Assessment of Readiness for College and Careers, PART, and is expected to be ready for the spring of 2015. Even though the bulk of the mathematics portion of this presentation is designed for grades 3 through 5, because that's where the transition at the moment is, it is helpful to know what is taking place in other grade levels. The assessment that students in grades 6 through 8 are scheduled to take in the spring of 2013 will be aligned to the old New Jersey Core Curriculum Content Standards. It will be set up in the familiar format of the NJS. The spring of 2014 will see a shift from the New Jersey standards to the Common Core State standards. A new assessment is also being designed for these grade levels by the park to be administered in 2015. In preparation for the shift from the New Jersey standards to the Common Core State standards, the test designers of the NJASC included several field test items on the 2012 version of the assessment. These items were carefully designed to see how well the new Common Core State Standards can be tested through the format of the NJS. Students were not told which items were part of the field test, and the responses to these exercises did not count as part of their overall score on the assessment. This image offers a visual representation of the newly aligned grades 3 through 5 mathematics NJS. The five domains are represented on the left side of the chart. Next, the weightage of questions by grade level in each of these domains is shown below in bar graph format. Moving to the right side of the chart, the types of problems and their assigned point values are shown, offering a sample of how the total of 50 points will be reached. Finally, the pyramid on the top right expresses the transitions that have already taken place and those that are to come. Preparing students for the success on the NJS is not a standalone concept. In fact, it should be embedded in the regular classroom. Teachers should spend time familiarizing their students with the types of content and questions they will come in contact with. Three types of math questions, the multiple choice, short constructed response, and extended constructed response. The two types of English language arts questions, multiple choice and open-ended, and the types of reading text, informative and narrative. When possible, teachers should also explain how the questions will be scored and allow students ample practice with writing clear, complete responses. Teacher feedback on these types of exercises is essential. Educators must also be familiar with the requirements listed in the Common Core State Standards. Teachers must make sure students are entering and leaving the grade level with the necessary skills and ability. Any gaps in knowledge must be addressed as they may lead to further difficulties down the road. 
Finally, students must also be given the opportunity to regularly practice for the test. Success on any standardized test requires a combination of skills in understanding content and familiarization with the test itself. Consistent test rehearsal with Common Core and New Jersey Ask Align test prep programs offer students the opportunity to combine both of those skills. Following these tips will help to ensure that your students are prepared for the NJASC assessment in the spring. Students perform at their best on standardized tests when they feel comfortable with the test content as well as the test format. That way, they can focus more on what is being asked and less on how it is being asked. One program that allows students the opportunity to practice tests in a setting that mirrors the new guidelines and framework is Lumos Learning. This can be used to extend classroom learning as a supplemental program. It is self-paced, student-directed, individualized and personalized learning that can improve student performance on any grade level standardized test. Lumos Learning offers the most flexible types of supplemental learning, ranging from printed books, online assessments, instructional videos, and platforms for schools and teachers to include their own unique content. This program relies on the most up-to-date Common Core State standards, and all resources available are aligned to the most current frameworks. More information can be found at lumoslearning.com slash a slash mj. Contact myself at marissa.adams at lumoslearning.com or Jennifer Dermer at Jennifer Dermer at lumoslearning.com, or you can contact Lumos Learning directly. There's uh, an email address, support at lumoslearning.com, and there's also two phone numbers. We would be glad to answer any further questions that you might have, and we really appreciate you joining us as we discuss the ins and outs of the NJASC transition plan.